Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when we talk about the mixed ownership model, this is a legislation that, as the Labor Party says, is about choice. But this is about a choice for New Zealand going forward. We have a choice of whether we take the approach where we just borrow and hope and put our country at great risk, or we make some choices now that put our country in greater security going forward. We have the choice in this House of working out a future for our country, or we can just borrow and hope and let somebody else work out that future for our country, as you're seeing in Europe. That is the choice for New Zealanders out there. That is the choice that they took at the last election. They knew the economic plan and they agreed with it. The Labor Party and the other opposition parties come into this House today and try and make the vulnerable feel that this will be against them. They talk about power prices, they talk about the elderly and that, but they don't look at the economic reality of what the situation is. And I thought it was an extremely good speech we had from the Dr Honourable Nick Smith. That was a great speech. And, we, and in that speech, I think he brought some economic reality to this debate. And, and the Honourable Nick Smith talked about a lot of things there that were actually shows um, a, a true understanding of economics rather than the opposition propaganda about economics. And when you look at economics, you've got a choice, but you've also got assets. And um, as people, and individuals, and as a country, we use our assets in different ways. We buy and sell assets. We make the most out of them. We capitalise them. We borrow off them if we need to. We have all those options available. And this is a sensible approach going forward. And Nick Smith used the, the issue of a, a, of a house and, and um, a state house. And can you say that just because... Oh, no. well, well, what this member, that's what he said. That, like, that when you use the state house, he was saying if you had to buy that back from the state, could you then go to the state and say, oh, I already owned it in the first place? Well, you can't. That's a, natural, that's a natural part of economics that you can't do that. Yet that's what the opposition is saying should happen here. And um, if you look at this, if you look at the example of someone buying or selling a house, as one of my other colleagues said, you know, we do that in our life. People buy and sell houses and they, they build their equity through that. This is about this government building the equity of New Zealand through using our assets most appropriately. And we have a choice of how we use those assets. And if we don't, if we don't use those assets properly and we don't build for the future of this country going forward, we will pay a big price in a few years' time. And you go overseas and you see what that big price is looking like in Europe. If you put your head in the sand, think you're just going to borrow and you don't have to build your economy, you don't have to... A point of order, Sue Moroni. Been here for some time now, and he's accusing you of borrowing, and you of um, of right. selling, and I think the the member has been here for long enough to know not to bring you into the debate. Uh, the the point, so speaking to the point of order, Michael. I wonder if uh, you might uh, refer the member to new speaker's ruling 27 bar 5 bar 2. Yeah. Look. Uh, Members are required to be a bit careful about which pronouns they use to bring the Speaker in, and I'd just ask uh, David Bennett to consider that as he continues. Thank you, Mr Speaker. You're not aware of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at what's happened overseas. And, if, and if, if, if people look at what's happening in Europe at the moment, look at places like Italy and Spain. What kind of interest rates are they paying? We had the monetary policy statement come out this morning, and the Labor Party, is, David Parker, talked a lot about economics in his speech on this debate earlier. Have a look at that and see the interest rates that you're seeing in Italy and Spain, getting up to that 7% interest rates. New Zealanders don't want to be in that situation. The biggest thing we can do for New Zealanders is provide that stable economic environment and not give them that, those high interest rates. If you have a look at the, if we look at what the Labor Party delivered for New Zealand in October 2005, 7% interest rate was the official cash rate, and that got up to 8.25% by July 2007. The economic management of the opposition will put interest rates up, as you're seeing in those countries in Europe. They've borrowed, they've put their head in the sand, they haven't looked at what their economic options are, and they're paying the price for high interest rates. New Zealanders out there need to look at that as well, and they looked at that because they realised that that was the implication for them in the last election. 
if they didn't have good economic management, if they didn't make choices like this, they will get to a situation where you would have those high interest rates and their personal situations would be put in jeopardy. That is the choice that is out there. That is the choice that New Zealanders understand. The opposition does not understand that choice. And when we talk about the mixed ownership model, we get a lot of rhetoric from the opposition. They talk about dividends at, at a certain percentages and, and uh, comparing that against interest rates and saying, well, hey, government can actually earn more if it had those assets. Simply not true. Simply not true. New Zealanders understand, and the figures are here for Ms Sue Moroni, and, and these figures, if Sue Moroni wants to have a look at the figures, we get about a 4% dividend and we have about a 5% interest rate. That's a 1% loss. Ms. Sue Maroney, if you want to look at the economics of it. And New Zealanders understand what a loss means in economic value. Unfortunately, the opposition doesn't. And when we look at that, New Zealanders know that that dividend rate should not take into, a ca into account capital taken out of those companies. And the opposition uses figures that take into account the capital taken out of those companies not just the real dividend on the income that those companies generate. And I think that's very important. And when we look at that, we also need to look at what they are. They're state-owned enterprises. And what are state-owned enterprises? They're expected to operate in the commercial market just like any other companies were, would or were. If you look at the principles of the, the, the SOE bill, it says here, are profitable and efficient as comparable businesses that are not owned by the Crown. So they are not expected to be loss-making ventures that the Labor Party or the Green Party or New Zealand First talk about. They are expected to be profit-generating just like a private company. And that is why under the Labor Party you saw a large increase in, in costs of the, uh, on consumers. And that's part of the, 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 the nature of the demand and supply of energy. And New Zealand has a very high sense of renewable energy. And uh, the last speaker from the Labor Party talked about the need to make a cleaner, greener economy. Well, we do that through our energy sector. It has a very high aspect of renewable energy. And that is something that we are very proud of and we invest in. And we look forward to these companies in the future being part of that. When we look at um, the, 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 um, the, the SOEs, mm -hmm. We need to take into account what their role is. Um, they are government generated and government owned to the large extent, but they also have aspects of private ownership in them in some cases. And there's nothing wrong with a balance between private and public. We do that in a lot of things to deliver services throughout our communities, whether in education and health. Um, why can't we embrace a public private use of capital, resources and skills, because the private sector does bring some skills to the table that the opposition will not acknowledge. The private sector tends to bring good management skills, um, an understanding of consumers and customers, and the ability then to deliver to consumers. The public isn't so good at doing that necessarily in a commercial environment such as an SOE. A good mix of public and private will be in the best interests of New Zealand consumers. It will be in the best interests of the New Zealand government, and it will be in the best interests of our economy going forward. And this bill, Mr. Speaker, is about choice, but it's about the choice of the economic management of our country going forward. We can either choose to put our head in the sand, borrow and pay the consequences where someone else will be in charge of this process in 10 years' time. Or now, we can make that investment in the right things that build a stronger country going forward, which we can have a say in and deliver the best results for New Zealand. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm, I was going to respond to the consideration I've given, and the member might want to listen to what I'm going to say and then reflect on that, because I, I did take uh, some time to discern the situation uh, as pertains minutes of a select committee. Let, let me firstly say that with regard to the website, um, I have checked the availability of the records that are on the, the website and um, 
The select committee uh, documents uh, have been available since Monday and there have been no uh, complaints either internally or externally about that. Now, with regard to the matter of the minutes, the minutes will become a public document when the bill has completed its passage through the House. And so, in that regard, they will become a public document and, and it's on that basis that I rule. Now, what the member is actually seeking to do is to release minutes before the appropriate time at which there may be an issue of contempt and the member needs to actually reflect on that. Yeah. Yep, a point of order, the Honourable Clerk. Sir, I've, I've inquired of the FEC clerk also, and uh, you are absolutely, well, uh, two things I'd say to you, sir, you are right, the minutes are not on the website. Mm. And the advice that I have been given uh, a few moments ago was that it is not protocol that the, the, uh, uh, the select committee minutes are placed on the website. That's what I've seen. However, yeah, that's correct. However, I'm also advised that those that I asked the clerk, uh, not, not the colleague here, but the, the, the previous uh, uh, clerk that was uh, mm. not here, obviously, uh, if those minutes are uh, available uh, publicly, if they are available to access, I also checked with the FEC clerk who tells me that uh, though it's not protocol to put them on a website, uh, if uh, members of the public were to ring or approach, uh, that they would be able to be released. Now, that's the advice I've got, mm. and I've got that from, well, from one of your senior people and also the clerk of FEC. Now, my point is simply this. I, I in no way wish to breach the rules of the House or bring the House or myself in contempt of it. Mm. However, uh, that's the advice I've received from two officials. And that being the case, sir, they are not publicly available documents in terms of they're available in, in respect of access. Uh, and I seek, on that basis, on the basis of advice I've received from your people, to have them tabled. Now, if I'm incorrect, that's yeah. a matter for your staff, not my, not me. And, and I have given that ruling that it is, uh, it is uh, that the minutes are not will become public after the passage of the bill, and there can be a breach of, or a contempt if they are released before that point. So that's why I've ruled. Well, I've ruled essentially that they will be a public document. Okay, and I'm advised that they are not available to the public till that point till the point that the bill has completed its passage through the House. I'm advised. Right. Point of order, sir. Point of order, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Um, then we have... Then... Order. Clayton Cosgrove. Then, then we have a difficulty in that, again, not challenge... I, suspe I suspect we both have a difficulty, sir, actually. Not Nick Smith, but we have a difficulty. And that is that you've received some advice. I've also received advice, not just from... Uh, shall we say, a non-senior official, but a, a senior official in this chamber. And uh, we now have a situation of contrary advice both to you and I. I don't um, challenge there, your... There is, there is no conflict. No, well, there is no problem because I have given a ruling and said that I will uphold the, uh, the rules of the House that minutes do not become available because of a contempt. And I've also ruled that they will be a public document and it's not... Uh, uh, well, this House does not uh, seek leave to release public documents. I realise there is an issue of timing, but the issue of contempt is the one upon which I've ruled. Now, the next member seeking a call is a split call, and uh, the first to take a five-minute call, Honi Harawera. Kia ora, Mr Speaker.